It's time for yet another hashtag draw this in your style where I draw your art in my style. So let's get into it. Oh, but I forgot this is going to be a Posca pen edition where I only use Posca pens. Our first piece of art is by Bunidi. All of these screen names I don't know how to pronounce. I am so sorry, you guys. When I saw this piece entered into the hashtag, I honestly could not resist redrawing it. As soon as I saw it, I screenshotted it and saved it for later because I really wanted to draw this. It's a simple character, it's a simple pose, but Wow, that, that colorful hair just going around the character looked like so much fun, especially to redraw in Posca pens. Because I think the most appealing thing about Posca pens is that I'm somewhat forced to work in a colorful palette. I say somewhat because later on I do end up working in a more muted tone. Once you realize you can just pump the color out of the Posca pens and use them however you like, you tend to go back to your roots. So I do resist using Posca pens in brush form for the most part, but if you use them straight out of the pen and you use all of the colorful colors, you can come up with some really fun results, which is exactly why I chose this piece of art. That rainbow hair was perfect to turn into Posca pen art. And I was also just really curious to see how I was going to turn that gradient hair into a gradient with Posca pens. Sure, you can use Posca pens with a brush and introduce water to create an easier flowing gradient sort of color, but I find it really fun to use Posca pens in shapes and harsh sort of I don't even know how to explain it. Like blocks of color that turn into a gradient but that aren't actually a smooth gradient of color. So drawing this character was pretty straightforward. Of course, turning it into my style had a few issues as far as proportions go, especially when it comes to the head. I had to restart because I drew the head ginormous, which isn't something I aim to do, but is more of a bad habit with my style. Something else I love to do with my art style is give my character Characters a shorter torso, which is probably an anime inspired sort of situation. The main way you can tell that the torso is a lot shorter is where her hand falls. In the original piece of art, her hand is covered up by the hair, but because the torso of my character is so much shorter, her hand ends up not falling behind the hair, and I did unfortunately have to draw a hand, which is... Who wants to draw? No one wants to draw hands. Well, I, well, okay, to be honest, I kind of enjoy drawing hands because I do make them so shapely. They aren't perfect by any means, but it is fun to draw hands every once in a while. But when it came to color choice for this character, I know that the outfit of the original character was more on the brown side, but I honestly couldn't tell if this was maybe more of a black with a brown tint or if it was actually supposed to be brown. At first, when I did start this piece, I was going to give her brown clothes, but then I thought I really wanted her focus to be the color of her hair. And even though brown isn't the most colorful color, it does have hints of red and I really wanted the focus of this piece to be the hair so I did make her outfit black. And when it came to the background, I'm not really a fan of coloring right up against my Posca pen art. So instead of having the dark color around the character, I had the dark color surrounding the character and the white around the character. Did that make sense? I have no idea. And to achieve these lighter colors, I mixed, I think it was like a combination of black, brown, and red, watered it down, and layered it. And that is my character. I had so much fun creating this rainbow hair character. To create the gradient, I basically just made strokes and circles and exaggerated shapes and just had a lot of fun with this piece. So boonie 80s, I hope I did your character justice. Next up, we have a really fun mushroom character by Remurmut. Why you guys do this to me? When I saw this mushroom guy, again, I could not resist redrawing him. He just looked like so much fun. He has so much personality. Look at those shapes. He's a mushroom. He's a punk. I had to draw him. 
So going into this piece, obviously, as you can see, the original art has a lot of earthy colors, which I am super into, but with the, like I said, the nature of Posca pens, you are given a lot of really bright, saturated colors, which I wanted to work with. So as much as I loved those earthy tones, I had to resist working in them, and I worked with a lot brighter, saturated, colorful colors as I call them. Even though going into this piece, this character in art style seemed a lot familiar to mine. We have a lot of shapes that I was attracted to when it comes to character design. I knew that going into this in Posca form was going to be a lot more different than if I went into this illustration with watercolors. Again, the main difference is going to be those bright, saturated colors, but also the way I approach form and shape with Poscas is even more exaggerated than my normal watercolor style. I know it's kind of hard to imagine the difference between my watercolor and Posca art, but you guys, there is a huge difference between my Posca and watercolor art. It's kind of crazy. So going into this guy, I had so much fun with him. I think the main difference is the eyes, which isn't even that big of a deal. He has eyebrows in the original art, but I couldn't resist this weird swirly unibrow situation. I just thought it was so fitting and fun for this character. And I also couldn't resist showing teeth with his mouth. So in the original drawing, he just kind of has like a meh expression with his mouth. But I love showing teeth a lot. Maybe it's something I overuse, but I love showing teeth, so I couldn't resist giving him this weird brownie sort of grimace showing off his teeth. If he has teeth. I mean, I, I, he's a mushroom. Maybe he doesn't have teeth. Overall, this character was a lot of fun to put into my style. I did struggle with color choice, which is something that I've realized I really want to practice a lot with with Posca pens because Posca pens are my second most favorite medium to work with. I do want to work with colors and exaggeration of colors a lot more. So this is a really good exercise to just take a piece of art that already exists and put it into my style so I can just really focus on the exaggeration of shape and color. Also, can I mention I almost never draw guns. So this was one of the first times. I mean, have I have I ever drawn a gun on my YouTube channel? I have no idea. I don't think so. He has a gun. I drew a gun. That's something I, I don't do. Anyways, a few struggles to mention on this piece is that I usually try to avoid using black when I do my Posca illustrations, but for whatever reason, I did end up using black for the backpack, the shirt, and the skull on the mushroom. I just think that I do normally focus on trying to use the dark purple for shadows, but there's a point where you can only push the shadow so dark until you have to use black. I don't know. Either way, I really do enjoy the result of this piece. He's a fun little mushroom guy. I guess you could say he's a fun guy. Ha. 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 Next up is probably the number one self-indulgent piece. As soon as I saw this by Just That Huffle One, Thank you so much for the easy name to say. I knew I had to redraw this piece. I cannot resist gore, obviously, and a pretty girl in a fluffy dress who's all stitched up with different skin. I mean, how could I say no to redrawing this piece? Although she isn't a piece that necessarily really pushes the different colors and intensity and brightness and saturation of Posca pens, I actually had a lot of fun exploring the way of extracting the Posca pen paint, mixing the different colors together, adding water, and using a paintbrush to complete a majority of this piece. It's not a way I normally work with Posca pens, but I took this as a really fun opportunity to explore Posca pens in that different way because I'm always down for exploring my mediums and experimenting and trying new things. So although I know it is a way to work with Posca pens by taking the paint out of the pen and adding water and using a brush to apply the Posca pen paint, it's just not a way I like to work with Posca pens just because like I mentioned, 
I do like to work with them at their most colorful, intense, fun way, <laughs> I guess. I feel like Posca pens really force me to work in a very colorful, saturated way. Whereas when I work with watercolor, I do tend to work with more earthy tones. I make everything kind of dull. It's something I do enjoy more, but I do enjoy, like I said, the way Posca pens make me get out of that habit. But because this character was so skin tone heavy and there was a lot of variety of whites and maybe like grays and light blues, I guess I could have approached this piece in a very bright and colorful way, but I did want to try to work with Posca pens by mixing the colors and working with them in a new way that I don't normally work with them. So this character was so much fun to work with. I do have a skin pack. I don't... It technically is called a skin pack tone for Posca pens, but the colors are so crazy. If you want to work in a more vibrant way, they definitely work, but they consist of yellow, pink, very dark brick red color and a brown and some lighter colors that I just didn't feel like would work with this piece. So I did end up mixing a lot of these skin tones together to create more subtle mixtures so that our character wasn't just straight up yellow, brown, and red because I felt like that was going to be just a little too intense. And I thought it would be more interesting for this character in particular if the red of the blood was the color that stood out instead of these really different and abstract colors of skin tones. So I mixed up some skin tones that were a little more subtle. We have more yellow tones, red tones, brown tones, and pale tones, but not straight up red, yellow, and brown. For the body of this character, her dress does go off page, but I can only assume maybe she is some sort of zombie or Frankenstein monster character, but I did want to interpret her as more of a ghostly dead character. So I took her dress, poofed it out, and and had her floating in place. And I think this adds a lot of motion and just more playfulness to her character. And at the end, when I added those gold details into her hair, I decided to go ahead and put them throughout the piece. And I think it added a fun little flourish. So thank you so much, Just That Huffle One, for letting me redraw your character. Next up is a piece that I felt like our styles were so different, but at the same time had the same silly value to art that I couldn't resist recreating. This piece is by Enil Edum Art. <laughs> and she submitted quite a few different illustrations with this silly and goofy character. And I thought it was just so interesting. This character is basically made up out of a circle. And although I really do push the shapes in my art, this character really pushes the shape in art. And I thought it would be really interesting, especially to see the difference between my style and their style. So I had to recreate this silly illustration of of this character sleeping in this bed in the most unmajestic and flattering way. Also, I did feel like the perspective was really interesting, although I don't really push perspective almost ever in my art. A top to bottom view was something I don't normally do, so I thought that would be really fun, as well as this piece is a fully illustrated background piece, which I thought would be really fun to turn into my circle frame illustration, but also just have bits and pieces stick out. So obviously the bed in this illustration doesn't fit inside the circle of the floorboards that I created. I also put the rug outside of this circled area and the wall plug where the phone is plugged into is also outside of this circle of floorboards. Oh, I guess also I replaced the plant she had. It was a leafy plant, but of course I had to replace place it with a cactus. So when it comes to fully illustrated pieces when I do my Posca illustrations, I, for whatever reason, don't like the look of a fully illustrated piece. So I did want to play around with this piece that did have a fully illustrated background and just kind of illustrate pieces into it that stuck out and were just here and there. And it was a lot of fun, especially with this top-down perspective that I don't normally play with and this silly pose of a character laying on a bed. It was just it was a lot of fun. 
So speaking of the way that I approach different illustrations with my Posca art, I do have a few different styles when I approach pieces. So the main difference is that I either work with a lineless style or I do work with a lined style. For the most part, I do like to push a lineless style with my Posca art just because the colors are so bold and it's just so much more fun to push the shapes and you can really have fun with this when you don't use a line art in your work. However, sometimes there are just situations where I find that the shapes or the colors just aren't different enough to separate different parts of the illustration. So I do feel like that I do need to use line art. So this piece, for example, is a piece that I felt like I really needed the line art to support it. I think overall there were just too many details and Posca pens, they come in a large variety of sizes for their nibs, but they do get hard to work with if you work with smaller details and I felt like a line art was definitely going to support the different details and the fact that there was just so much going on in this piece. So I do really enjoy a lined look with my Posca art, but I do try to work lineless as much as possible just because I do struggle with that with my watercolor art and it's really fun. So that is it for this piece. Last but not least, I wanted to create another fully background illustrated piece and this one was just so colorful that I knew it would be perfect in a Posca pen styled piece of art. Now the way I approach this piece, again like I said, I don't know why, but I just don't like the way my fully full page background illustrations look, so I like to approach them with a weird sort of frame or breaking the frame or just, I, I, I don't know. But with this piece, looking back on it, I might as well have just filled in the whole background with the sky because it's basically the only piece that I didn't completely fill in. But either way, it looks pretty cool. It is so colorful. By far, my favorite part about this piece was creating that sky. That colorful sky was just so much fun to make. The colors that I had for my Posca pens were just so perfect and it just looked so satisfying. I mean, just look at those colors. They're so vibrant. They blended so well together. It just looks, it looks great. I love it. That said, I wasn't too pleased with the rest of the illustration and I think the main problem I had was working with colors that weren't super different from each other. Like I said, with Posca pens you are limited to just a few colors and although you can take the colors out and use a brush, I really like to stick to the pens. But maybe this is one of those times where I really should have taken the light gray out and added more white to it because the gray itself is just, it's too much of a mid-tone and this entire illustration is very heavily mid-toned. There's not a whole lot of really dark darks or light lights throughout this piece. So the whole thing just kind of becomes mush and it all kind of runs together, but I did have a lot of fun, like I said, with the sky, and it was really fun to exaggerate the shapes of the characters, and something I haven't drawn with my Posca pens is a checkered blanket, so I guess I got to do that. It was also just really interesting to watch this piece come together because there were so many aspects that I wasn't really happy with, but it was interesting and fun to tackle and try to work around and make work. As you can see, there are quite a lack of trees in this piece, even though the original has a lot of trees in the background. When it comes to my Posca pens, I just don't think I have enough practice to put a whole lot of detail into my pieces. So I do like to focus on bold colors, simple shapes, and overall just keep it more simple. But I think in this case, I probably should have pushed myself to make a more complicated background. But hey, I'm still learning. Maybe one day I will feel a little more comfortable. I definitely just need to buy more Posca pens that are in smaller nibs. It's just really hard to work with Posca pens when all of your nibs are on the bigger side. So one day I will get there. But for now, I'm just really satisfied with how the sky turned out. And just to make sure that the apple did pop off of that red background, I added a yellow and orange bottom to it. 
And that is our final piece. that is it for this episode of hashtag draw this in your style thank you so much for everyone who entered i wish i could have drawn more but i couldn't i did have a lot of fun redrawing these and i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one stay golden and real quick a huge thank you to all of my patrons for the support you guys are seriously amazing if you do want to support me on patreon check out the link in the description you get coloring pages early access to my videos and secret sketches Thank you guys so much for all of the support. Bye.